normal variables today. So we're looking at the sum first of all. If we've got these two distributions, x and y are both normally distributed with means of mu1 and mu2 and variance of sigma1 squared and sigma2 squared. Okay, so just stating them in general terms. So if we wanted to do the sum of those distributions, then we would add the means and add the variances. Now, if we consider that we took um, x1, x2, and so on up to, up to xn as independent observations from the same distribution of x, then we can follow through the logic there that if you were wanting to do the sum of those, they would also follow a normal distribution where you added up the means, just like we've just seen with the x and the y's, except this time the mean is the same thing every time. So we're going to do the mean n times. And the same with the variances, they'll get added up n times. So what you end up with is this result. Now, if you're thinking about the difference, if you did x minus y instead of x plus y, you would get your that it follows a normal distribution. You would do the first mean minus the second mean, but then your variances would be added together. Remember, with variance, it's a, it's a positive measure all the time, um, so you're going to add those two together. You won't subtract them. Okay, so let's have a look at some examples. So a course grade is calculated by adding together the results of two tests. We've got the standard deviation and the mean of each of those tests there. We want to find the probability that a student achieves a course grade higher than 120. So we're going to talk about test 1 as x and test 2 as y. And then the grade is found by adding them together. So that will also follow a normal distribution. We're going to add together those means to get 115 and add to get, to add together the variances to get 164. Now we want the probability that x plus y is greater than 120. So here's our normal curve. With a mean of 115, we're looking for it being more than 120. So that's the same as one minus the probability that it's less than 120. So Putting it into our z curve, we're just going to do this 120 minus 115 divided by the square root of 164. So we're looking for 1 minus 5, 0 0.39, and you can read that off of your tables to get the final probability of 0 0.3483. Okay, second example, taking the same um, situation from before, but we're just looking at test 1. Now, 10 students are chosen at random. We want to find the probability that the sum of their scores is less than 635. So, we're just looking at test 1, and we're taking um, a number of results from the x distribution, 10 to be precise, and we're going to add them up. So, I'm going to define t as being the total of those 10 scores, and then t will be normally distributed with um, a mean of 630, so 10 lots of 63, and a variance of 640, which is 10 lots of 8 squared. Then we want the probability that the total is less than 635. So it's going to look like this. So that's the probability that z is less than 0 0.198. So that gives us 0 0.5785. Okay, and then looking at test two, these results are normally distributed, as we saw before, um, but the course leader decides to deduct marks for poor presentation. So the number of marks that were deducted is normally distributed with a mean five and standard deviation of two. We want to find the probability that a student has a new score less than 50. So we'll call test two A and the deducted marks B. So A is normally distributed with mean 52, variance 10 squared, and B is normally distributed with mean 5 and variance 2 squared. We're going to calculate the new score as A minus B. So their original test result minus the marks that were deducted for poor presentation. So we would have a mean of 47 and a variance of 104. Now before I go on, it's useful to note that... Um, these situations only work if the two things are independent of each other. Now, if we think about it, these probably wouldn't be independent. You would expect a, a, a student that had poor presentation would not do so well in the test, but we will ignore that for now and assume that these are independent variables. 
Okay, so carrying on. We now want the probability that a minus b is less than 50, so the new score is less than 50. We've got that mean of 47 there, we're looking for under 50. So that will be the probability that z is less than 0.294. Reading off the table, we get our final result of 0.6156.